next on the list of banter news and something that is just perplexing i guess for someone like myself being a casual fan of mma um Paige Van Zandt has signed on to Bare Knuckle, what is it? Bare Knuckle Confederation, Bare Knuckle whatever um, organization. Um, I'm guessing because of her, you know, horrendous streak in the UFC, she's decided to kind of move on or maybe because Dana White has told her, hey, it's not going to work out here. We're not going to give you big fights anymore. And being somebody of her stature in terms of um, pull and appeal online it probably doesn't make sense for her to fight on undercards or to fight on early prelims so she's probably trying to seek other things and go other avenues but the UFC thing is weird because just again as a casual fan about it, this is the, her picture of her saying contract signed about to change the game fight news coming soon and I'll actually get up um, Ariel Hawani's thing as well the interesting thing about UFC which I've kind of been analysing is that it's a bloody brutal sport right not in terms of the you know not only for the physicality and the uh, potential for you to have life, you know, altering, you know, injuries due to you entering the octagon and fighting somebody that wants to take your head off. No, not that. The fact that for most part, for the most part, especially like in lightweight or, you know, certain divisions in the UFC, certain weight class in the UFC, as soon as you reach a certain ranking, the game just steps up, you know, 10 to 20 fold. You can be really good and be, you know, maybe people, you know, point from position 11 down to 19 and the moment you try and fight someone in the top 10 it's a whole different ball game it completely changes and then unfortunately if you can't beat anybody in the top 10 you don't move up and you don't get a title shot and that's your ceiling there's nothing else you can do there's no amount of training no amount of coaching no amount of going to thailand and kicking bamboo trees nothing's going to change the fact that you cannot beat anybody in the top 10 so you will not get a top 10 finish so it makes you look at some of the past champions, especially with a lot more reverence and be like, wow, man, you went and beat all these guys, retained that belt for that long. That means you're definitely one of the goats. But then you're seeing for the people that, or for the guys and girls who aren't as skilled as the top 10, I look at someone like a Chris Weidman, is probably a good example. Um, probably some of the equivalent to like a Paige Van Zandt. Unfortunately, especially with Chris Wiseman, unfortunately, the game has just moved on as well. That's the problem you have. So if you're not a very good, let's say Paige Van Zandt is not a very good fighter in general, right? She's not probably of the level of a top 10 uh, or a title contender. The issue that she has is that she's going to still remain at that level of skill. But then loads of other young girls are going to enter the sport, you know, obviously see her and see what she's doing. They're going to want to make a bit of a payday if they're unable to become pro in other, in, in, in other sports. And they're going to up the levels again. They're going to change it. They approach. They're going to have maybe a different style. Um, and then your your skill set that you're already struggling with in the beginning is going to become null and void. So it's such a brutal sport. So when some of these guys and girls decide to do really questionable things outside of UFC, I can sometimes have a bit of sympathy for them because, you know, the, the Dana White doesn't give out free lunches, right? He's paying them the bare minimum that he wants to pay them. So unless you're in the top five, ten percent of fighters in the UFC, you're not going to get paid that well either anyway, right? It's like what thirty grand a fight sometimes, and when you calculate the training and the nutrition and the you know all that stuff and the travel and the stays or an accommodation, maybe not now because you know they they're all doing it on Fight Island in, de in designated locations or in Las Vegas and stuff. But generally, if it's like a you know if it's like a non-COVID world, you're spending a lot of money per fight it's probably more than 30k that you're getting from the UFC so sometimes you're in a negative I've heard of many UFC fighters who actually work you know a regular part-time job because you know the UFC is not paying them enough so I can understand her desire to go and do something else but bare knuckle boxing for for Paige Van Zandt when she's not even you know no one no one can sit here and say even the, the most staunchest Paige Van Zandt fan could not say oh she's known for her striking she was known for her grappling just about right and then when you get to the higher levels you can't just rely on grappling alone you have to have more um you know more uh, tools in your arsenal to try and figure out your opponent and eventually beat them right let alone knock them out you can't just be uh, you know hoping for an armbar finish right or, or or rear naked choke right we we saw what happened already with that situation with um uh ronda rousey right she suffered for that because her game didn't evolve she was unable to do she was unable to to evolve or add to her skill set and you know the other girls who are far better at doing so over past her and then she got essentially kind of you know um thrown away um or left to the side for the most part but this is an update i think for area hawani talking about it and again i just don't know what the deal is maybe she hasn't got any friends i'm not too sure um but she says here 
Um, no, this is Eri Hawani. He says on his Twitter, he says, uh, just spoke to Paige Van Zandt, who confirmed she signed a multi-fight, multi-million dollar deal with uh, BKFC, the Bare Knuckle Fighting Confederation, I'm assuming. She's very happy. Um, she says, I still feel like this is a stigma in MMA that I'm just a pretty face. And what a way to prove people that it's not the way I see myself at all. <sighs> Bloody hell. More coming. She added, it was an amazing contract, an amazing opportunity. Obviously, she can't do MMA for the time being, but she says she won't close the door or to the sport and add that she and her husband Austin Vanderford recently relocated to Florida to train at at and <sighs> good luck to the girl I guess but this is not going to end well man it really isn't like she's going to get lit up and if you've seen if you've watched but if you've watched the UFC and you think that's brutal bare knuckle fighting is no joke man it's no joke bare knuckles um you get cut way more easier um obviously without grappling it's just all headshots for the most part from what i've seen and people get hurt for real for real um you only have to see uh paulie malinaji's fight with what's his name <clears throat> with uh connor's boy to see the damage that gets inflicted and even a fight prior to that one of the guys end up looking like elephant man right it's no joke man and this is i guess is one of her quotes up above here it says um page van dan says she wants to prove she's more than just a pretty face Oh, okay, that's a quote that you mentioned before. The, the, the longs. What's she saying? This is a sport where people probably have a highest rate of getting cut open and having long term scars. It's definitely something that I'm not even worried about for me. Jesus Christ. And, just, and that's the thing I wonder as well sometimes. Do you think she has friends outside of MMA or UFC that could advise her or even offer some kind of second opinion? Because if you were blessed with this sort of genetics, right, and you had this sort of face, but you happen to be a deadly fighter wouldn't there be other avenues that you could maybe pursue wouldn't there be maybe again because we live in a covid world she is un unable to do hollywood or you know any kind of industry entertainment industry gigs because you know, they've effectively been you know cancelled for the most part but come on surely there's something else that she could be doing than potentially getting her face completely mangled by some no name at you know in bare knuckle boxing it's bad enough that she's getting beaten you know kind of convincingly in the UFC by random people but imagine she's getting beat by just random people at bare knuckle fighting and no one's actually watching or what well, no one but comparatively to what she pulls in from UFC and again that's a, it's not even a slight on her because I just think it's just a brutal sport man unfortunately you just you hit you, you fight a few people you realize where your ceiling is and you're like rah I'm a 14 rank I'm 15 rank at the moment in my weight class and there's no way that I can get above that until i beat the people that just beat me and they're not going to want to fight you anytime soon because they beat you you're a big name they're going to want to move on and kind of get to the bag or get to the title shot they don't want to give you the opportunity to kind of reclaim that l no way but phew, i don't know man i don't think it's a good idea i obviously don't but bloody hell man the decisions you have to make as an athlete during these times and it's really really crazy man um and again this could all be rectified if then the white paid his fight is fairly but unfortunately you know fair is not something that's in the vocab of you know of most businessmen which he probably shouldn't you know especially as a promoter he probably isn't his um probably isn't on him to adequately compensate his fighters but if if only that was the case man a lot of these things wouldn't be occurring it really wouldn't if there was more but then maybe as well, he could easily say he's given her so many opportunities, many more opportunities than probably she should have been given considering her skill set and her record. Um, and he, she even mentioned the other day, she felt like Dana White was, she, she was surprised. She thought Dana was her friend because then he said, I'm, I'm guessing because she lost recently, he kind of iced her or kind of gave her the cold shoulder. She's like, oh, I thought he was my friend. It's like, your friend? What? Like, <sighs> the delusion is strong on that one. But hey, what can you do? Good luck to Paige. Hopefully it works out for her and she sparks all her opponents, but I'm not counting on it. I'm not counting on it.